Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith and I'm your host, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. All right, let's go inside. All right, we got this jigged up on the table here and we're all clamped. We've already ground our well prep and then clamped it together and took our measurements that we wanted and kind of felt our split line. We're going to bring you in a little closer so you get a good idea of full penetration prepping that I've done on this. Very first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to we're going to tack weld each of our cross members here. Now these are going to be what we weld first together, just like doing framing and deck or framing and hull. The framework has got to be 100% secure before you can do the surface of the deck or the hull. <coughs> and that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and do all of our verticals, which are these cross members here. And we're going to weld those up. But first we're going to put it, we're going to tack it and then we're going to get a look at it. We're going to check out how everything is, is staying in shape. And then we'll put in a root pass. We're going to use 332 7018. And we're going to go ahead and burn in and we're going to do a vertical weld on each one of these so we know that we're burning into because the, the, the most important thing is 100% penetration on all the structural part of the door and these these four main members right here are the structural uh, integrity of this this bulkhead opening. Shoot, I just realized I got my Keens on. I'm gonna have to go change in my work boots.
Okay, we put a root pass in our verticals, and we moved our clamps, and we put a nice burning tack with a square going across here, showing us that we are in line with our, our face so that we're, we're not offset anywhere, and we've burned a, a good tack in on those surfaces there. We're ready to pull off all of our clamps now and we'll go ahead and we'll needle gun and clean up the side. We're going to flip it over and we're going to get a good look at our outside surface. Okay, that's about what we had. I said we had a gap in here, and that's pretty, that's pretty flat that way there. Remember, you have to make contact on a long distance between the upper and lower dogs. So this surface has got to be making contact before those dogs come in because of the way it's going to dog the hatch to create that seal. And that's looking good. We're burning through. Actually, I got slag on this side. Pretty good. We got our hatch laying up here on two by fours facing up. We've already put the rubber gasket in. We have the hinge pins in here. Now, we finished up the walling and then we went ahead and I, we retacked or walled in our handle uh, keepers here. That's where you slide in the handle and it stays with the door and when you need it to uh, put over the dogs to help uh, uh, dog it tight, it's, uh, it's in a, a helper and uh, it fits in there. This was severely warped like a banana. It was pretty level. Now this outside support here is the same as the framework or the strong back of the hatch or the bulkhead opening. There was quarter to five sixteenths of an inch of face out on um, both of these, <coughs> meaning that it got to this point right here and then this was kind of dished away from the combing. So we put it in a hydraulic press, we blocked underneath here and we pushed and we bent this back so that we were, had the straightness that we desire. At least straight enough to where we can feel we can do our first chalk test. Now we already know that this is, because we measured this width right here, and for some reason the tops were a little thinner than the sides there um, and we don't we don't know why any of this is the first time we're we're modifying a combing and and a hatch to shrink down the opening that we're we're fitting up we've done and worked a lot of hatches and dogs in the shipyards over the years but everything has been uh, old school already in place and we just need to repair it. Now we know that we're going to have to build well build up on this knife edge but we don't know how much or where we're going to have to adjust it. 
So we're gonna start off and we got some acetone here and we're gonna clean our gasket. Now the gasket's not glued in. We cut, we cut a bit off of the gasket because of course it was too long. And we, we pulled back so we have plenty of, they can use this piece here again. They just gotta clean dress the, the split line and then re-glue it and it'll be okay. All we want is we want to adjust, uh, address the contact. We just want to make sure that they have a usable seal on the gasket surface. And that's our main concern on finishing or calling this door job or project finished. Of course, after this is welded in, it probably should have another test and that will be up to the installer. Okay, we got a nice black gasket there that can show up any chalk con um, contact on it. Sometimes those safety lids are a pain in the ass. All right. Chemicals are always kept far, far away from the hot work area. Okay, next we get out our jumbo sidewalk chalk. We got 20 pieces in here. And we pick out a color. We could use white, but um, let's use the cool blue. Now what we're doing is we're just smearing some chalk on this knife edge here. And we're doing like a transfer that you would do like bluing metal to metal contact areas. If you have a holiday in your chalk, you can have a holiday on your mark. Okay, put our chalk back in the box. Okay, here we go. We haven't really adjusted the dogs at all except for making sure that they are tight. Okay, now this is chalk. This is not liquid. This is not anything. We're not waiting for any penetration or anything else like that. So, we can undog it. Don't forget the latch. Okay, now we're, we're gonna take a little air because we just want to make sure the line we're looking at is hard and on there. Okay, we have about three inches on the bottom of the door or hatch bulkhead opening and we have just a touch like a pinky touch on the top but we do know that this needs to be filled up probably from there to there now we're going to go ahead and we're going to set up the TIG torch and we're going to TIG weld build 
this knife edge in those areas needed to and then resurface that blend it with the sander until we get a proper chalk test and then we'll be satisfied with this hatch bulkhead opening door whatever we're ready for our final fitting and check we put the Delrin washers in between the hinges and we put the pins in with the cotter pins just slightly sitting in there just slightly tweaked so you can't they won't fall out the very last thing we did was create this piece on the plasma cam it's just a little foot it comes down making sure that the door doesn't drop down or an indicator as far as the height of the door as as the years go on and this knife surface wears down you know it's got enough height right in here right now the door sits right at it the same as it did on this one right here it just barely touched that corner the hinges are new everything is new on here so we don't have a bunch of slop where this thing is down it closes pretty well in the same spot give or take 10 15 thousands that's how tight it is as far as the play this way here on the hinge all right we finished adding our material on these two low areas top and bottom of the door we made three build up passes on it and, and what it is and how you actually determine how far it is first off we put a straight edge across here we use a box tube and actually the box tube was pretty handy to lay here and that gave my hand real steady capabilities of TIG welding this across here after the TIG weld and just lightly sand it and round it so that it, you're making the same shape as it is all you're doing is you're bringing the height or the contact surface closer to the rubber gasket so by putting a straight edge on here you can eyeball it by putting the box tube on here it kind of holds it in two planes right here and this way here and here and you can get a real good light up, uh, you know, you put your flashlight behind here and you can look at some light and you can work it. Even, even welding it as smooth as I did, you were able to go ahead and indicate, you know, by putting the, the box tube up there with a flashlight and you can see how you're doing. So you progressively build that up. So you make a pass and then your next pass is shorter, your next pass is shorter, next pass is shorter, next pass is shorter on the basic. Every once in a while you got to come back and you got to add something somewhere else. Anyway, we folded this thing back and forth and we got two successful good chalk uh, imprints on it. And then we went ahead and did the final assembly and we added this. This is cooled down now and we're ready for our final chalking. All right, we still got some of this blue chalk left. <clears throat> and it's just a fairy tale if, uh, if you have a light spot to put two coats of chalk on here. We've already taken acetone and cleaned that. That's all nice and good, nice black, ready to rock and roll. Okay, one coat of chalk. <laughs> all righty. Here we go. <clears throat> Okay, we're gonna let that chalk soak in. <laughs> and the latch, you can't forget that latch. It's in case you wanna lock your, your uh, piece here. Okay, let's get the air nozzle, just lightly blow the dust off.
okay I'm gonna grab my other camera and come around uh, this piece here because it's just too hard to tilt and move that piece around okay I've got the other camera here and I'm just kind of walking around and you can see the blue contact all right that's the first step in thinking you have a good seal. The next test would be getting the same chalk test after this combing is welded in place and then after that putting the fire fire hose to it and uh, watching it not leak. Okay one one uh, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. here it is. Okay one thing I wanted to talk about is I, I did weld on that knife edge to bring it up for the final contact but this hatch itself or the bulkhead door itself was warped pretty good from all the welding and without the dogs on here I was able to put this in the hydraulic press and I blocked under this rib and under the outside lip out here because the bend was basically focused between this last rib right here was given the most pretty much I was flat surface contacting on both sides here and as soon as I got here this was pulling away this is pulling away a quarter to five sixteenths of an inch and I was able to see that across the surfaces right here so I did it to both ends now it was hotter than heck the other day and I was sweating and I, I was frustrated with a few other things so I didn't I didn't even get a picture of this thing in a hydraulic press but I did put it in the hydraulic press I'm not not hiding anything from you I just didn't have the opportunity to get that into play so anyway I took most of that dish out I was happy with it and then that's when we started going with the weld on there so anyway we're ready to put this to bed put this together call our customer We'll show him the, the bluing we have on here, and we'll load it up in his vehicle. Until next time, get her done.